Today on Talk About That, John ponders a new career in hip-hop and gets stuck on a boat when his Instagram post goes rogue. Meanwhile, I explain why I'm a control freak at booking travel, but a negligent stepdad when it comes to meal planning. Plus a conversation on revelation and our need for certainty and aversion to mystery. Today's episode is not sponsored by USB ports. You will never connect a cable to us correctly on the first try. Let's do it. Johnny, it's another Monday. It's another episode of Talk About That. Excited to be with all of our listeners and viewers around the world. Can you believe it? We made it to the final four, just like you said we would. <laughs> I was thinking about our last episode, and we were like, oh, at this point, either our dreams yeah. will have been crushed. Or, or we didn't even make it out of the first weekend. And yeah, and then, or yeah, we either we've gone on, we did yeah. the thing, and you can be like, aha, I told you we were better than the three seed. Yeah. Yeah. Johnny, it's about matchups. And isn't that just true about life? It's about matchups, bro. Look, when yeah. that guy hit that, he hit that crazy hook shot. Yeah. And that was it. We were down by two. Desperation we, hook. And our guy, we mm-hmm. should have been tied. Our guy didn't release the ball. He was a half second late, and that was on him. Sakai Ziegler. Want that preach. And that was it. That was that was the game. That's how close. But hey, it makes me feel good that yeah. Auburn, one seed, lost also in the same round. See, that's kind of, <laughs> we're just like, I hope we're nobody else. We're just going to keep dogging the SEC. Right. And Kentucky was worse than us, lost that, in the first round. That was very, I don't want to say, that was so satisfying. Super satisfying. And then, of course, that team went on to win a couple more games, which was really cool. They made it to the Elite Eight. St. Yeah. Peter's. Yeah. I don't know if anybody is interested in this, but it was a pretty cool story. 15 seed, made it all the way to the yeah. final eight. I don't like that the final four has, and I'm assuming Kansas is going to make it. It's yeah, have, they blew them out. They blew out St. Oh, Peter's. Did they? Yeah, before I got here. They were winning about 30 points or so. So you're going to have North Carolina, Duke, Duke and Kansas. Yeah. And, who's and Villanova. Fourth? This is horrible. Yeah. They're all literally blue blood yeah. teams. Yeah. We hey, need an orange blood team. Villanova a little less, but. And their guy hurt himself. He tore his Achilles, we think. Oh. Yeah. They're star players, so they're going to probably it not make just, it much farther. It just reinforces all the, like, yeah. well, it's all about, you know, the high-profile programs are going to, mm, and you're just like. <laughs> <laughs> is, that your, <laughs> is that what you, what did you think happened? I tell you. Um. You know, I had a guy tell me today, yeah. a guy who runs sound for us, one of our new members, and I guess I just got through singing, and I was about to, to uh, I, 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 done, I did some announcements, and I came back there for something, and he goes, I love your voice. You should do radio. Oh, okay. And I think, I know he wasn't talking about a singing voice. Oh, he was, you know, when that. you did the announcements. The announcements, like, I wonder what I said. I wonder what I was doing. Yeah. Did you, you think put I have some, a voice for, little... I have a face for radio. <laughs> But. Well, people listen to, to our podcast, and I hear people say like they like our voices or whatever. Yeah, maybe we're soothing. See, I think people you, like driving off a bridge. <laughs> you have a great radio. Oh, you voice. think so? Yeah, oh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Well, you know when I did the uh, those, I've done these car commercials. Yeah. I've done three sets of car commercials for this dealership, and the guy saw me doing stand up, and he was like, "I want you to be our." And I was like, "This guy thinks I'm funny." I had like a bit about a rental car, and I thought, "Well, this is why." Uh-huh. Come to find out, they had a deal with some advertising agency that writes the ads, and he just wanted me to be like the, their CarMax guy, like the nerdy guy that does the CarMax spots. Wow. He wanted me, me to be that guy. Now, I think he wanted me to put a little funniness and personality on him. A little Johnny W. But English I, on it, if you oh. will. <laughs> Coming right up. <laughs> but I think, yeah, it kind of made me go like, well, I don't know. I'm not a great looking guy. I'm not no, a. No, you're not even in the top 10. No. You're. Do you have a ranking out there? There's of a good-looking list. guys. Do you have a? Do you have like a, a sliding a <laughs> file that you change out every night? All righty, let's move he gets Brad outdated. Pitt. Let's move Brad Pitt down one. Uh, and get a push notification. It's. Do you? Really, <laughs> can you share that? Share that Google list with me. That Google Doc. No. Um, yeah. So I just didn't know, and I was like, "Well, this is interesting." So, but then I've heard people say, "No, you have. A, we like your voice." And my wife's even said, "I like your voice." Which is oh. like, okay. Oh well. This is why we're still together, man. Do you, baby? Yeah. yeah. It's a. No. Yeah. You don't say that? No. You like my voice? Well, the deal was, I actually had a really scratchy throat this morning. Okay. And I don't know that, if that played into it. Well, I've been kind of, I've had the crud, so I'm a little like, I'm still in my... A little haggard? A little gravelly. Yeah. It's got a bassiness to it that's not normally there. <clears throat> it's kind of like when you first wake up, you have like an hour or two, where if somebody calls you on the phone, they're like, are you asleep? You're like, no. No, I'm not asleep. But you're definitely right. were. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. And may still be. Can you tell when I'm like yes. answering the phone from bed? And I try to, I've tried to play it off before. Can you tell? You if know I'm just what? like still in a, I'm in a reclined uh, position. No, 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 man. I'm up, I'm up, I'm up. I often wonder, and here's the thing. 
if out of all the people in my I'm life, I'm on my way. I'm on my way. <laughs> out of all my, the people in my life, yeah, I always figure you should be the one to sleep because I know you took off a plane at four a.m. or whatever. That's what happened today. Yeah. Uh, so when you're awake, at, like when you well, text me, I got on me, a plane. I woke up at four to go get on a plane in, in uh, Kansas City. Drove around a car from Topeka. Topeka. Topeka, guys. Johnny's a big time traveler. <laughs> yeah, my first time in Topeka. But anyway, really? so yeah, I, uh, yeah, uh, I've driven through Kansas, which is mm. what you want to do. <laughs> No, they were lovely people. It was a great show. But anyway, so yeah, so it was, I was up early, and then I was going to, I was determined. I was going to, I'm going to make it time. I'm making it barely in time to go to church if I want to. Yeah, I thought you might, I might see you. And I was then preaching. by the time I got off the plane and walked through and got to the rental car and got home to change and come back, Curry was getting ready to leave. She's, she went home to be with her family a little while. Her yeah. mom's sick. And so she was just like, hey. And so we hung out for a minute. And then I was like, now it's 10 o'clock. And I was like, now I could like bum rush over there and like yeah. for the last worship song. Right. Maybe find a seat. And I'm by myself, so there's that whole thing of like, where's Curry? Oh, are Johnny and Curry having problems? Yeah. And look, maybe we are, maybe we aren't. <laughs> <laughs> and draw your own conclusions. <laughs> but yeah, so then I so I did text you and go, are you preaching? And then I think I got your hopes up, right, that I was yeah. going to be here. And then you're like, you looked out in the audience and I wasn't there. And you you're like, I there. can't go on. I can't, I can't go on. <laughs> yeah, it was going to be better if you were there. I was saving yeah. the good stuff for Johnny, and because um, it was about me, it was <laughs> it was <laughs> it was about the end times. Oddly enough, it mm. was about you. I, have you ever found yourself wanting to preach at people? But mm. I mean, and obviously you have wanted to. Have you ever been guilty of it, where you're literally like, "Let's hope this hits home with," and you're you have a person in mind. It's like Bobby Boucher. You're yeah. seeing them on the football as you kick the football. Is you know it that. You know what I have is so there's a principle inside of me that I won't preach at someone based off of, like, a, a conversation or an event that week. In fact, this happens to me all the time. Yeah. I will be in a conversation, a lunch, a counseling session where we've talked about someone's problem, and then I'll realize I happen to be, because often I'll share something that's already fresh in my mind that's also going to be in the sermon that week. Oh, yeah. And so then I will I will call them on Saturday and go, hey, listen, I'm going to say this, and I said it to you this week. I just want you to know, this sermon's not about you. Like, I'm, oh, not, wow, I'm, not, yeah, I'm never going to bring what we talked about privately into this. So they usually laugh, like, oh, it's funny. You know, I was like, no, but I just want you not to worry about it. So that's that's a big deal for me. But yeah. what I do find is, and this is a mistake that I have to keep working on, is there is someone in my mind, like today's was a great example. There's like a group of people maybe, and maybe there's maybe there's people that when I see them, I assume they're on that side of this. Right, like opposition mindset. Right. Like, I was talking about eschatology end times. Today, we used a Bible project video on the day of the Lord. It's the, the study of escargo. Right, the t- study of, yeah, study of end times. And the the video is amazing. Bibleproject.com, guys. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, they're really well So done. good. We've used them so many times, and they're just great pieces to, to they, they do the job, and then you can kind of be free. But I was, I really talked about the unhealthy obsession that many Christian leaders, ministers, and just people have with are we living in the end times, and yeah. especially right now with, what, with what's going on in the world. Right. Is Revelation literal? Is it a, an allegory? Is it a... Yeah, and people are afraid, and I talked about you can tell a tree by its fruit, and and I'd really actually, not not to say too much about it, but I really had some thoughts I'd, I'd, that had never come to me before, and so I read two scriptures, one where Jesus in Acts chapter 1 says, when they say, hey, will, will you restore the kingdom to Israel at this time? Which is, they're asking, mm-hmm. are you bringing the day of the Lord now? Like, this is it. You just rose from the dead. Are you done? Can we finally be done with this Roman occupation, sin, all this stuff? He says, it is not for you to know the day or the times that the Father has appointed for these things, but you will receive power and the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And so he sends them into the great commission. Mm-hmm. And then Paul says the same thing in, in Timothy sorry, Thessalonians, he says, hey, about the times and seasons of when all this is going to happen, it, right. I don't even have to write to you about it. Like, it was, a, it was a foregone conclusion in the first century that, guys, you know we're not supposed to know. And so he's, I'm not even going to write to you about the times, you know, and he talks about the thief in the night, but he says, and I thought when I was a kid, that was always scary, mm-hmm. you know, but he says, but you, you don't live at the night. You don't live in darkness. You live in the day. So don't live, you know, and he uses the metaphors of being sober and being awake and he says, you know, because you're not appointed for wrath. And so it was like this joyful thing. But in my mind, trying to talk people out of the unhealthy obsession on those things and to yeah. live. And, and then what really drives me crazy is I used a verse like where he says, in the point of <laughs> this teaching is this, colon, to love one another, 
to live a life basically of authenticity of you know he 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 lays out the gospel of what it really means yeah. to put on the breastplate of faith and love to cover your I thought head. It was a breastplate of righteousness. This though. is a different one. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it's a whole different, it's, it's a whole different form, outfit, whole different armor, okay. suit of armor. Yeah. All right. And so, and to put on like the hope of your salvation as a helmet. Okay. Yeah. And it's like when he says, "This is what I want you to focus on," and y'all know we're not supposed to focus on this, but I, th- I said, guys, because I talked to a podcast network executive the other day, mm-hmm. and I went and looked at some of their listings. Johnny, there are probably seventy-five podcasts on their network. About the end times. Yeah, yeah. About prophetic things. Some of them are about... It's been going on since we were kids where, like, everything is a sign of, it's happening. It's now. And I I was like... Everybody wants to believe they're in the last generation. And and often America is a part of the brand, right, of it. Mm -hmm. And people are trying... I said, you know, guys, there are people legitimately who, in my lifetime, have believed that... So security numbers are the mark of the beast. Yeah. And, you know, especially when those first came out. That's not my lifetime. I know. And then... (laughs) Yeah, but but there are people who believe that five G was mark of the Do beast. Do you want to go ahead and share your social security number? Guys, with the... it's uh, seven nine seven. Oh, seven seven. No, wait, seven, I've lost seven, yeah. seven, seven. So I keep dialing seven. Um, <laughs> and I was like, people in our time have thought five G was some sort of yeah. nefarious, insidious right. part of scripture, bringing the prophecy to fulfillment. There are people who believe that American politicians are the antichrist. The five Gs in the Bible, you got Gilgamesh. <laughs> Um, Gargamel. Goli- Goliath. Wait, that's a different one. Uh, Gollum. Wait, no, that's a different Goliath one. Goliath is in there. Yes, not Gollum uh, or G- Gargamel. Go, go, Gomer. Gomer. She was, uh, she was the was prostitute she that Hosea. married Hosea. How many is that? That's three. It's 3G. Oh, we can get this 3G. And uh, that's why your faith is suffering, John. You got no reception. You got no, you're still living on 3G. And isn't that just like our lives, John? <laughs> isn't it, though? No, but I know what you mean. And it's interesting, like that. And I wonder if there's a there's somebody out there doing that work of finding out because I we follow a couple of the same accounts on Twitter that talk about the rise of like Christian nationalism and the way that the American evangelical church centers itself in matters of prophecy and it centers itself in matters of like global the global world and like that we're the center of it all. So and it affects everything. Even things like when gas prices go up here, we blame our president. Even if gas prices are up in every other country. Right. We still would blame Trump or blame Biden or give Trump credit or give Biden credit if you're whatever, right. even though it's a global issue right? and it's based on a pandemic and it's based on all kinds of other many factors, but we still try to do that. And I think that we have so much information. We've had this conversation before, but when it comes to eschatology, I think our level of tolerance for certainty has gone way down Yeah, and our need for certainty and our faith, it's like we need because like we're like okay we're fighting this battle out here with people who don't believe in Jesus at all so we can give them these things to hold on to and like i think it's just a very sexy thing to be like but i know these secrets yeah and i know the exact way it's going to go down it's insider christianity yeah and you yeah. can un- it's like gnosticism you can unlock this code for them uh-huh. now you have the cheat code and they go oh and then their minds opened up but really what it is it's almost like pride because it's like you poor people that don't understand the scriptures the way yeah. I do. It's, it can become that. I don't think, think it always starts there, but I don't know. Because well, it's like a sci-fi movie when you read Revelation. That's exactly like, what at I face said. value, you're like... I said, this is like a Marvel universe yeah. in some ways. We can now we now watch on screens things that we look at in Revelation they can make with CGI, and it's we've kind of made a comic book yeah. out of all this, and it's all theoretical. And, it's like, and, and you can ask yourself, well, what's the harm? We're studying the Bible. And, and I went into Thessalonians where he says, like to, or sorry, to Timothy, where he says, avoid, like, um, what he says is, excuse me, let's get it right, Johnny. They spend their time, and he says, number one, avoid those who, who teach false doctrine. I was like, I'm not telling you that studying the end times is false doctrine. I mean, mm. and I'm not telling you, and we're not de-emphasizing it today. Like, this is important. Jesus yeah. talked about it. Peter talked about it. Paul talked about it. It's like, this is important. But, but where does it fit in the context of the gospel? Um, I think it was Augustine who said basically that most of our lives are not about what we're doing right and wrong. It's about misordered, it's misordered priorities. Right. Majoring on the minors or right. whatever. So how do I get myself properly ordered in this? Yeah, yeah. And and so where does this fit in the order of what I believe? And and then he talks about those who, who do endless genealogies, which for the, the rabbi tradition, they were trying to follow even new Christian 
Christian rabbis who are mm-hmm. now converted based upon who they're related to. And so they were spending this time. He says, this just leads to meaningless talk. That's the word he uses. Right. It just leads to meaningless talk. And you spend your time in meaningless talk. So Why is that not the name of our podcast? Guys, meaningless talk. About with that. John and Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it, but that's the thing. It's like, it's not a, it, you think, oh, this is harmless. But I was like, you can't spend your time then. To say yes to one thing is to say no to something else. Mm-hmm. Like you, you, you have only a limited amount of capacity and energy. And so for the, for the Christ follower... I spend my time obsessing either. I said, guys, I met a lot of Christians too over the years who were super excited about, in their minds, a bunch of unbelievers burning in a lake of fire. Yeah. Super excited about it. I don't think that's right. It's the end game. Uh, Yeah, it proves that you were right about the wrong that they perceived wrong they were doing. Right. It's like, well, they got their comeuppance. Like everybody loves the movie when the bad person, the Cruella de Vil gets her comeuppance. Yep. And so we're envisioning it that way. I, I What I find weird now is like you're seeing it happen with what's happening in the Ukraine where people are like, this is a prophecy being fulfilled. And they're almost excited and they're almost trying to push us into World War Three. Right. Like, well, what's going to happen next is, and I'm just like, no, we, we're trying to stop from nuking each other. Like we grew up under that. You know, well, I grew up, we're five years apart, but like, I grew up, we all had missiles pointed at each other. It was like, yeah. whatever we do, we don't want to go that far because you can't come back from that. Now people are like, I've heard, overheard people say, oh, look, this is just proof that it's going to, I'm just like, what? What are we doing right. here? You can't come back from that. No, mutually assured destruction yeah. is not a good end game. And, and war is not <clears throat> of God. I mean, we got to, we got to, it's not, I hate that, that mind of like, I understand having a, armed forces, and we need to protect our freedoms and all that, and we need to protect all that stuff. I get it. But the amount of money that we spend on it and the fear-mongering that we put into it and the sheer joy that we take in it, and Christians that take sheer joy in warmongering, it's it's upsetting to me, and I know that I'm probably a pacifist by most people's standards. I don't believe we should just let people push us over. But I think there's a line where it's like you see people like taking, like they're gleefully want to just rush into combat. Yeah, I think anybody if you if you really read the founders, um, and you really read, you know, sort of their their mindset, <clears throat> there was always a, a, a for a lot of them at least. Uh, George Washington's a great example. I mean, it was super hesitant to have to use military force. Military put, force should be something kids at risk. You're putting teenage boys basically and young men like you're I mean, playing again, with lives when you do this. Again, I own guns. And, Dude, I and I'm not trying but, to say, but I don't want to. I don't want to right. have to use them. Right. right, it shouldn't be a thing. Like right. I can't wait for an opportunity. Right. To use Boy, this I should gun. hope someone tries to climb yeah. this window so I could shoot them. Yeah, right. yeah. Or like mess with me at the bar, see what happens. I'm carrying. Like those are the attitudes of people who should not have a gun. Right. And I do think, yeah. Again, I'm and we and all, by the same by the same count, those are the attitudes of people who should not have nuclear weapons. <laughs> if you're that right. guy, if you're Kim Jong Un, and you're that guy that you're like, yeah. he's got a short fuse. Like that's right. why we don't want you having nukes, dude. Yeah. Because you constantly threaten people. Yeah, and you got a both end where you're like, like you said, I believe in a, in a strong national defense, and our I, and I, I believe I, our warriors should be honored. Absolutely. They're worthy of honor, and they they've made more sacrifices than I could even care to count. And I understand that, but it's that thing of like everybody knows that person. Yeah, when someone just says, "Oh, we should just blow somebody up," I just go, right. "Man, like there is a there's a toll." And again, we're working with with refugees right now from Afghanistan. Like, there's a toll for war. Yeah, um, man. And sitting in their house, helping them rebuild a life that they had um i mean there's a there's a toll and and for whatever reason modern western thought wants to focus on who's at fault and and there's a place for that but not talk about that today as well i think that this distraction of spiritual thought can cause us to um i said this this morning is like so as people are fleeing by the millions across europe Mm-hmm. Right now, there's a lot of Christians sitting back trying, like it's almost like they're playing a card game or the lottery, trying to figure out, ooh, how does this fit into end times? And they're not helping the poor and the yeah. marginalized right now, and the, the people traveling with infants and orphans and elderly. And you go, that's why I, I don't, I don't have, I don't have time to be in both spaces very well. Um, and it's not a de-emphasis of that. It's going, this This might be playing into, but God's made it super clear. And this was the big thing. <laughs> like, I don't, I said, I'm not saying that revelations and prophecies don't still happen. Okay? But I'm saying this, if you believe, and, and, and this was kind of, a uh, for me, a, a bomb drop, because I never thought of it like this. 
those prophecies and revelations that are happening today cannot contradict Scripture. Mm-hmm. And here's two scriptures that say that explicitly state that God does not want us to know the dates or the seasons or the times of this. Some of the, well, the seasons, but not the days or the times. So if you're trying to reckon with oh, this is the day and the time, like He's already specifically said, that's not for you to know. Yeah. Jesus said it. Paul said it. So the new revelation, and I said the other thing is, if you get a video of some prophecy, always ask yourself, is there an ad in it? Yeah. Well, and people always like will use the thing. I mean, for I mean, decades and decades and decades, people have been using the you'll see these memes put up or, or in our day, it would be like you'd get a fax or you'd get an email or you'd get a thing or you'd see it on the bulletin board of church. And it would be like people will be lovers of themselves. People will be selfish and they'll be they'll have itching ears and they won't listen to sound doctrine. And in every generation, we think it fits. Right. We're we're that's us, because think about how good it used to be. Yeah. People used to endure sound doctrine, and now they don't. And that proves that any day now, and you're like, yeah, it's everybody sucks all the time. <laughs> it's the brokenness of humanity. Broken We've time. always had itchy ears. We've always yeah. loved to hear what we want to hear. It's just there's more of us now. It feels like a bigger problem. I mean, I was, there was a thing that I saw today that said if you're older than 45, which how old are you? 44. 44. If you're older than 45, the population of the world has doubled in your lifetime. Wow. So just that mass of humanity that's entered into the equation means, yeah, we're in each other's way more. We're going to be more selfish. We're going to be more ticked off. Yeah. Technology enters into the equation. Now our selfishness is on display. Yeah. There's more ways to project it. Yeah, we're more interconnected as well. So I depend on people that I may not be able to trust. So I'm not saying it's not getting worse I, as far as like, I'm saying it's, if it's not getting worse, I'm saying it's way more apparent maybe now. But these are the old fear tropes that we've heard since we were kids that like, we'll know this is happening when, and it's like, that stuff always was happening. Yeah, and I said that. I mean, the early church believed Jesus is coming back any any day. That's kind of been a belief of the church throughout history, and that's sort of the posture God wants you to take. Yeah. To believe and realize, and when I say the Lord coming back, I mean like the the setting right of all these things, however you see that sequence of events. But I see Kirk Cameron. Uh, first of all, uh, you see, yeah. elite, in a lead uh, role. I did not say left behind books today. I did say even fictionalized versions. I was like, there are authors that this <laughs> is exclusively what they write about. I don't oh, know. Yeah, it's cash cow. And I'm not saying it's a. I'm not saying it's bad. I do know that one. I do know one of those series has sold 72 million copies. That came across my my life the other day. 72 million copies about fictionalized eschatology. Well, it just proves that there's. A market right there. There's a hunger for it, and I'm not saying it's right or wrong to do that. I write books. You know what I'm saying? It's fine. I think you're mad you didn't write the Left Behind series, guys. I'm writing my own called (laughs) More Left Behind. (laughs) It's a prequel. You just, you just, you just go. There's just so many explicit things that we go. Yeah, yeah, but who can do that? I was like, that's the life in Christ. Is is Mm. is. How, how what does it mean to put on the breastplate of love and righteousness? It's like that's what you're supposed to figure out today. Yeah, that's that's the journey. Rather that's than the tension. thing that you can be sure about, and so you can walk around with this sense of like superiority over your neighbor, right? Because you know the deep, you know, gnostic thing about God that only you know. Right. That was the other thing we grew up with that I feel like was a real danger, and I don't have any of it anymore. Uh, there are people who I respect uh, that are pastors. But I think I used to feel like... I appreciate that. Thank you. But I think I used to feel like the pastor, it was his responsibility to be the most spiritual person in the room, and he had this secret handshake with God that I could never have. Yeah. And I think when I came on staff at a church, that started to fade away. Yeah. Because everybody's just so real around here, part of it. And then I was like, oh, now I'm that guy, and people are looking at me that way. Yeah. And I know what I am, so what are we all doing here? And you realize we're all just kind of... Hey, that's it's the priesthood of the believer. Like we're all we all get a chance to have a relationship with God. Yeah, and that was probably a good thing because I think now because then when you see these people they get lifted up and they fall inevitably it happens. I mean it's happening now. You see the Hillsong documentary that came out this week and the whole thing that's happening with them and they're out trying to put out all those brush fires. It's just that's what it is. It's what we do. The minute we build a thing. Yeah, we bit, try to build it in our own image, build our own kingdom, and they go, yeah, but we'll add God to this. It'll be great. We're doing this for him. And then you realize, no, we're not necessarily, we're probably misappropriating here. And then it's like, then it falls apart. And then it's like, let's destroy all these people. They've clearly you know, misappropriated right. our message. And it's like, yeah, but it would happen anywhere. 
Yeah, it's really hard to know what can be built. And I think that there's a there's a perception that modern cancel culture or whatever you want to call it, which I think is one of those terms that it, both it, sides It doesn't mean take, anything anymore. They take into their everything's cancel culture. Right. Yeah. So everything it's like woke. Everything like whatever woke is to you might not be woke to another person. Woke can mean anything left of you. Right. You could be the farthest right person. Complete QAnon and crazy like, person. One increment to the one left. One increment to the left. Like, oh, you're woke. I didn't know you were one of those. Yeah, you're like, yeah, oh, just you're because a- I don't want to put on a, you know, a, a whatever that bison head and go, <laughs> you know, paint my chest. Yeah. Well, look, if you weren't, I, I CRT got to you clearly because you should wear this thing. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah. It's uh. So yeah, you're right. It's one of those terms. Uh, um, yeah, it's one of those terms that doesn't mean anything anymore. Um, yeah, yeah. And, you, so and, and when you cancel, it's an impossible set of rules. It is, and that's to me, that's what political yeah. correctness is. Yeah. But what it's not is, I said something stupid on Twitter, a Twitter mob came after me, and there was a, accountability for my actions, because, and then I get fired from my job at Pizza Hut, because I'm a manager, and I said something racist. Well, I'm being canceled. This is just political correctness. Right. No, this is total accountability, because you were racist. Right. Well, and, and you were racist in a public forum. That and think, a company can, has the right. Again, that's that's the thing. When true capitalists talk about supply and demand and like the freedom of a company to make its own decisions on who it hires and fires, and I don't want to bake a cake for you if I don't want to. But then when they fire somebody as a private company for doing something like what the Papa John's guy did, and you go, but then people won't have outcry on his behalf because that's political correctness. It's like, no, this is pr- the private nature right. of our economy working. They decided, we don't want to be associated with this guy anymore. Guess what, Jared from Subway? You're done. That's not right. political correctness. You blew it. Nobody's going to call cancel on that one. <laughs> right. right. Yeah. Yeah. But it, it's it, that it, thing it, of like, yeah, yeah we, we rush to somebody's aim. We're like, oh, they're, now they're the victim somehow. It's like, no, they, they should have controlled their words better or not had the icky thoughts they had maybe. It's a reality of, and that's something Laura and I talk about all the time, like true freedom is not freedom from the consequences of what you do. Especially if you're going to be in a public forum, it's it is a reality that can be overdone. People can overcorrect, and some people just shouldn't be in leadership because of that. If you go, it's overwhelming to me the idea of the accountability. Some people don't get into ministry because of that. Absolutely, it's one of the things I don't miss about ministry. Honestly, yeah. like I'm, I do comedy places, and I go, I'm a blow in, blow up, and blow out kind of a guy now. I go in, I do my stuff, right. and I can leave. There's things that bother me about it, and part of it's that I don't, I don't put down roots as much. It's easy for me to stay disconnected. That feeds into maybe a, maybe a darker part of my personality sure. that I don't want to necessarily feed. But, and I miss sometimes being in one-on-one ministry with students and stuff the way I was when I was a college pastor. But the accountability of it is heavy. It's a heavy burden. And the eyes on you, it's a fishbowl. It's hard. Yeah. And so part of that I don't miss. Some of it I really do miss. It's... <laughs> And some people just aren't cut out for it, and they need to know that about themselves. Yeah. Hey, I'm not wired this way. I just kind of thought I really wanted to be a youth pastor when I was a kid. And now that I'm an adult, I realize I was just trying to impress Pastor John. Yeah. I wanted to be his favorite. Sorry, kids. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. And it turns out I wasn't cut out. I need to be a construction worker or whatever. I need to be a general sure. contractor. Like, And there's a lot. There's plenty of room for those. Yeah. I mean, and again, the weight, I talk about that weight sometimes. I think that living, trying to live more honestly— I um, wish you would. Helps a lot because I don't have anything to hide. Yeah. That's not true. I have things that are private. Yeah. So living honestly doesn't mean like. You want to go ahead and talk about some of those? Guys, um, let's <laughs> talk about that. Uh, you know, there are things, and it's something I say to the church all the time, like the, the goal of living in the light is not that everyone knows all the things about you. Yeah. That's, That's interesting. I, That's a good thing to say because I think we feel a right to that because of Instagram and Twitter yeah. and you know, it is even like uh, Taylor Hawkins for Foo Fighters died uh, Friday. Yeah. And he was 50. He's the drummer for Foo Fighters. And it's very mysterious. Obviously, we don't know yet. And people are making assumptions. That, I mean, everybody, every possible conspiracy theory is out sure. there. But it's amazing to me that I immediately felt like I had a right to know yeah. what happened to him. I don't know him. At all. His family's just devastated. His yeah. fans are devastated. And I'm like, gosh, I hope it wasn't. And I and I'm I'm refreshing, trying to find does anybody know the cause of death? Like I have a right yeah. to know that. It's just a strange thing. It is. It, it, I, I think so how much more do we demand that of people that we do know? Like public figures, we think, well, I want to know what her deal was. How much more do I go? I wonder what John's up to. <laughs> well, part of that is when we talk about like recovery stuff. You know, that's the first reaction is, 
you just want everyone to know all of our business. And yeah. I'm always like, look, we don't want everyone to know all your business, but we think that someone should know all your business. So there's a big difference. Yeah. Do you have anyone who knows all the, all the stuff going on in your life? And that is a key. Yeah. If you can't point to anyone who does, that's Yeah, well, you talk about mutually assured destruction earlier with nuclear weapons. Like, uh, my buddy Peter Miller used to talk about that. He's got, like, a friend, and he says that we have... We know everybody's... We know every, yeah. We know each other's everything, and it's mutually assured destruction. <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, you, you know stuff about me that could destroy me, and I know stuff about you that could destroy you. And this is... it's. But there, there's a healthiness in, like, knowing that and holding that and praying for each other about that. You know it all. Right. So for some people, that's obviously their spouse. So hopefully, you're, you're saying live in Christ is like a cold war with other believers. It is. I like. Um, I like where that went. The the missiles pointed at each other are <laughs> grace. No, um, wait, that's not. Right. No, and I think it's 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 so funny. I was on the cruise the other day, and I have permission to talk about this. Oh boy, I did not have Wi-Fi <sighs> except at times. Man, it, it was tough. Bro. It had to be. <laughs> It had to be I so didn't hard. We bought it for Sadie's I remember phone. I was on my fifth bowl of ice cream, and I thought, Lord, <laughs> take me now because I can't send or receive oh, I emails. I haven't checked how many likes I have on that last reel in at least 30 minutes, and it is yeah. killing me. I really wanted to be disconnected. Yeah. So before we got there, I stopped at Bucky's. You ever been to a Bucky's? Oh, of course. It's fantastic. Okay, never been. It's its own world. It's its yeah. own planet. So I shot a little... A little Little ditty, a little like, hey, this is crazy. You know, this is like, I don't know what I said. Something like, did you see it? I don't even know what I said. I was on my I phone. never saw it. No, I mean, no, I never saw it because I was watching it. The sound was off, <laughs> but I saw the <laughs> I saw the track and immediately was like, whoa, and I screenshot it and sent it to you. So, because I didn't know how long it had been up. So, I'm I'm working with some you know people who were helping me, and I was people, like, All the right, Bilderbergs, I, I, uh, maybe, the Illuminati. It's, yeah, maybe you heard of them. <laughs> and so, I, I uh, wonderful people. Mm -hmm. And so there was a mistake and a song that got put on there. And they they pick songs based off of the algorithms. And, right, what songs are popular right. that get you more views. Right. And so it was just a little silly thing. Some of these thing. songs are secular. It was, a, <laughs> it was a little silly thing that I shot on my way. It wasn't our plan. It yeah. wasn't like one of our podcast clips or whatever, you know. Yeah. I was like, ah, oh, this would be kind of fun, you know. And so I get on the ship. Of course, I can't really communicate very well. It's very sketchy. You know, it's coming and going. And I start. I get a screenshot from you yeah. and from Allison, like, immediately. Hey, nice song choice is what you say. <laughs> I forget what she said. Did I say that? Yeah, nice song like, choice? Hey, great song choice is what you oh, said. Oh, man. It was an inappropriate song title with yeah. an inappropriate song subtitle. Yeah. The, and, the band was inappropriate. The band name was inappropriate. And the song title was inappropriate. Yeah. And the lyrics were inappropriate. Yeah. It was like an inappropriate Burrito. Yeah. 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 And I, of course, I can't deal with it immediately because I can't get information out very well. So I just got your, I don't know, your text may have been sent two hours ago. All yeah. I know is I'm out at sea. Yeah. And Man, this right is, now. This is tough. This guys, is a tough situation. This is a crisis situation. It's like when it's like when Bush was reading to the children and the guy came and whispered in, hey, um, it's just like this. You, <laughs> the song choice on your uh, Instagram reel. You're gonna to want to have a look at that. It's it's going it's going viral. And People I, are really upset. I gotta put like, on a brave you face. Have to, you have to finish reading to the children. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it is weird when you're on that boat because yeah, the internet on the boat is like a hundred dollars a day. Yeah, and it felt this problem felt way bigger to me than it probably was. Yeah. But because you're worried about people's like are people gonna think like that you chose that? It's a well, again, the amount of energy it is taking me to even try yeah. is absolutely astronomical and it makes me so I mean, this is the vulnerable side it makes me feel so much even more dumb because i see people who just do that in their sleep oh they make great content all the time and they know how to naturally put it out to many platforms and they know like but that's not true but that's but that's, that's but i think there too. are people who do well, there's people who are gifted at it for sure, but there are people who've been trying at it for 10 years. And they're just 10 years ahead of you. There's some people, though, who've been trying at it for 10 months and yeah. are already ahead of me yeah. on those things. Are they better looking, though, be honest? Absolutely. Okay. It doesn't take much. <laughs> and so, but it's just kind of like this shouldn't be that hard. And I'm, and I'm not trying, I'm not the old guy shaking my fist. Like, I'm, I'm on social media. It's fine. Yeah. I, I, I can do a lot of this myself, but I believe in teams. Right. Like, look, I, I want to delegate some things too, and it's hard because the minute you delegate and then something goes wrong, you want to, like, I don't delegate my travel. Like, I've booked my own travel. Yeah. Uh, for my whole career, 15 years I've been doing comedy now. And, uh, 
I had so many agents that I've worked with go, well, why are you, we can do this. We have people. Yeah. And uh, I was like, with CAA yeah. for a while, and it was the largest agency in the world. And they go, we have people that just do this. Yeah. They know, they search the thing, and they get the best prices. And I go, you're going to not understand that I need to do an early flight on this day, and then I need to get out on this day because yeah. I want to, you're not going to want to know, you, you don't know my preferences. It, I could tell you some rules to go by, and then it, the rules are going to change, and you're going to do something wrong, and I'm going to call you and go, well, how would you book? Right. And now I'm stuck out in Topeka. Right. Or- it's easier for me just to do it myself. And yeah. plus, it calms me. Like, Todd Hawkins told me that when I was – I told him that. I go, I like to do my own travel. And he goes – I thought he'd be offended. He goes, I understand. He goes, your job is so abstract, so this is something you can, like, check off. All right, I booked that hotel. I booked yeah. that rental car. I'm going to Topeka. And then it's done. Whereas, like, my bit about Heinz ketchup is never done. It's mm. always growing, and it's changing, and this oh. crowd liked it, this crowd didn't. I have to alter it. Yeah. Like – you know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's like, it's this weird thing of like, when you make your money off being creative, you want this thing you can check off. So maybe that's the thing. I don't know. I don't know. For, I, I, I have a hard time delegating, but to your point, like, we got to do it. You have to have a team. I don't want to do it. And I want the team to do it. So, by the way, I put out a thing. But you want to do it right. I put or a, they're fired. I put out a thing on LinkedIn <laughs> for a, like a content curator, social media manager kind of thing. Which had, everyone thinks they are, though. How I, do you know if they're for real? I had 85 applicants right, and in 24 you, hours. How do you know what you're choosing? I was then so overwhelmed. Yeah. I was By like, the 85. Oh, I hope, wanted someone to make me less you need overwhelmed. Like four. Yeah. I was like, oh, give me. And I was and I was already hiring 85? for. Yes. And I was already hiring for. I was already at 14 applicants for the new student ministry director. So I'm I'm interviewing people. And Throw a curveball. Hire one of those guys to be the youth director. Guys, hire the social media curator to. Boom. What could go wrong? <sighs> And so, like I did, I, I and I'm, I'm. It's just a. I just go and I have a conversation with a friend who's a best-selling author. I'm not gonna say who it is because I've been well, name dropping, well, but I will say this guy's is a pretty big deal. Um, the name rhymes with <clears throat> Mikado. <laughs> Me and Max were hanging out, and anyway, I was talking and I, I was kind of sharing. I was like, "Hey, who do you use for this and that?" and and he was having and that's it, and his social media is great. He's like, "I'm actually doing it myself right now," and I've been looking to. And he said, dude, I feel the frustration of we can't just be authors anymore. Yeah. We can't just do what we do. Uh-huh. You know, that you have to be simultaneously platform building in order to be an author. And that really, and my therapist knows this well, that really rubs up then against like calling and where my energies go. Like, right. What you have the bandwidth for and what you don't. Because I want to be creating the thing that makes it worth promoting. Yeah. And I'm always, if I get to a place where I really, I think I'm there. I get to a place where I'm like, I'm so now, I'm having to focus so much on promoting. I'm not even, I'm not even certain that I like what I'm creating in that moment. Yeah. In that moment, you know. Um, right. If it's something that's just off the cuff and you're just trying to like, I got to keep engaging these people because consistency is key. And so here's a Bucky's video. For what? For like followers. And then, yeah. so for example, listener. And I may be promoting this. I'm supposed to be writing a newsletter, like a weekly newsletter. Uh huh. Th- th- that's what I do. The Daily Driver. Well, I think we're gonna. I weekly, think we're gonna go with the talk about that brand. Probably the driver's so. seat. <laughs> right. no, ooh. Let me. Let me. Nobody brand, will. Let, let me brand this. You want a ghostwriter for me? How about buy John Driver with Johnny W? That'd be, dude. I like the sound of that. Okay. Anyway, like that's you got what yourself I. Yourself a deal. Like you think that's what I could do? Like that's really what I do. And because of me trying to platform build elsewhere, and there's a lot of things going on at church that are really good, but a lot of like just that job, it, it, we're very involved in some very important things. And right now, it's like I, I for the first time in my life, I told I told some of the days like it's like, and I don't like baseball in terms of playing it. I was never very good at it, but you I just I'll, want it for I'll the watch. analogies. You want I it, just for the use it for the metaphors? Yeah. Some people are born on third base, think they hit a triple. Some of y'all have been standing in right field, hoping someone's going to hit the ball. In the right Some of y'all field. I need to <laughs> sacrifice fly so somebody else can make it home. Glory! Some of y'all think it's a one hopper when it's really a three. I don't know. That doesn't That's help a, at all. <laughs> you better, you if, better. It, if it hops three times, it stopped at that point, and you're you didn't run far enough. At any rate, I was you're, in okay. <laughs> I was in the batter's box yeah. <laughs> in this metaphor, and it's like I'm watching pitches. Yeah, and it's like I can't swing. Like I. This is a very rare for me because you know you always like John. You're the guy who gets up and decides you're gonna. And I'm like, man, yeah. 
I'm just watching the ball come by a little bit right now, and and I'm I guess I don't know I'm doing stuff. But you're learning. You're you're doing your research because people do that sometimes. They go, I'm gonna learn this pitcher's uh, patterns. That See, way, when I come up against him in the games that matter, I'll know. He's gonna know that I never swung at a ball. But that that's when you throw him off because he oh. Goes, oh this guy won't swing. Then you go oh but I know when your fastball's coming. And then like, viral video. Wow. I don't know. I don't know. And the metaphor of the viral, like if I hit the ball, would yeah. it really go viral, Johnny? Let's look at my, let's look at who I am. My, uh, <laughs> our buddy Ed Wiley, he's decided to like go all in on TikTok. And so he told me that he's been texting me this week. And I think he even posted about it so I can share it. But he just, he shared these videos and they get 200, 200 views, 300 views, 12 views, 40 views, 200 views, 200 views. Then he made one and it was just about Dollar General stores. Just like a strong opinion about Dollar Generals and some jokes in there. And about how there are some nicer Dollar Generals than others. Yeah. 27,000 views in the wow. first day. He's like, well, okay, I don't know what to do with this information. Am I just going to be the Dollar General guy? <laughs> right. <laughs> you know? what? Like, what would you do if your Bucky's video did go viral? Uh, and you're like, well, that's my brand now. I'm yeah. the Bucky's dude. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't want to be. I, no. that, I just wanna, that, that, that's, the, that's the thing. Like, And even then, what do the views even mean? Yeah. Like, for a guy for, who's a pastor and an author... The views are, and this is where you have to come to, and I recognize this now, but like it's not like number one, they even produce followers. Right. And then number two, they certainly don't produce like someone reading they the book. they produce Christ followers? No, That's do they now. To... That's the point. Like, I'm not, it, 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 this is part of my Enneagram 6 stuff, but like those are already shallow connections to me, which already right. feel inauthentic. Yeah. Like, if I'm going to affect something. It's almost something, like you're using them in some yeah, ways. And yeah. And I hate the feeling of that. Yeah. I like to be in deep relationship or nothing. I'm learning to have but acquaintances. But you're trying to get them <clears throat> to access something that you have made is your ultimate goal. That will benefit them. Correct. That's so why that's, I, that's why I can. There's some altruism there. I'm not sure. I, I assume there's no altruism in me at all. Yeah. I just kind of assume that. I do, too. I, I was just trying to use right, that word. Right. That, <laughs> that's my word of the day calendar. <laughs> I assume like there's no, like I just assume it's all prideful hubris. That's something else I have to deal with. It's not all. That way, but that's what I assume. You try to one up me from altruism to hubris. Hubris, yeah. You see, I did that. Yeah, it won't work, John. So I got a lot of fifty cent words in here. <laughs> you better get ready for the cornucopia, Johnny. If you're gonna bring all this, uh, <laughs> if you're just gonna be a scuttlebutt, Listen, that was the one I came across the other day. Subsequent words are coming. Oh wow! Like subsequent, subsequent superfluous words. Well, they'll be they'll be superfluous. <laughs> they're not. They're not superfluous. Just. Yeah. But, you know, it's it's one of those, like, you go, I'm shooting a Bucky's video. Uh -huh. And then what I think of is there's someone out there, they're like, oh, yeah, this is my life today. I love to share it. Like, those are the extroverts, the sevens. Cool, this is great. They don't really care. And I'm trying to go, where's the thread? Where's the through line mm -hmm. to the to the to what I'm really doing in life here? And I'm having trouble following this. Oh, and then, by the way, we put the wrong song on it. Now, I had to make a statement. That's the funny thing is when the statement came out, I was like, John is going to make a statement. <laughs> it's gonna be bigger. It's gonna than the make it that worse because that will get seen. Uh huh. That will get seen. It's like you posted the correction. Yeah. Oh, uh, we're terribly sorry for what occurred yesterday. <laughs> Let your mind wonder as to what it was. <laughs> Breaking news. Right. John was an idiot, but we've deleted we're the We're not thing. gonna tell you what it was. Yeah. And so everybody was like, what, what, what in the world? They're trying was, to think what possible was song in a it could have been. What was the... Yeah. No, they're trying to think about what horrible, like, what song was it? You know? <laughs> and, and this is what the listener's doing right now. Yeah. And you can't find it unless you're in the dark web, I'm sure. Yeah. That's where we've banished it to. Listen, if you if you know how to get in the dark web, email me at john at johndriver.com. Is it like the black market? We'll like, be able to work together. Like buying things on the black market? I need someone so like the same that. same thing? Go to the dark web, get a couple of kidneys, Maybe. whatever you need. Hey, hey. <laughs> Is it hard to is it hard to acquire? <laughs> I'm fresh out of kidney jokes. Sorry. Yeah. It's a, it's, no, but I mean again, I, I think I'm looking for that person that goes, oh yeah, I, I surf the dark web. I can uh -huh. easily fix up your algorithms or whatever. Like, you mean like rig it up for you? Where you're gonna, but you don't have an unfair advantage. You think? How do you feel about that spiritually? An unfair advantage on social media? Yeah. An unfair advantage on something that matters little to nothing. That That's what you're telling yourself so you can win and take views from a person who's working hard right now. Maybe John. what God wants for me is just to write and to stop worrying about platform. Or maybe God wants me to be a good steward and realize I live in 2022 Man. and I need to care about that because that's what the people around me are listening to. You tell me the answer to those two, that that tension between those two Man. places, I'll give you 100 bucks, Johnny. I wonder what, like, it, it's so interesting that we have to think about that. We have to have a message and we send it out and now we have to hope 
it's not going to get like stopped along the way by whatever, like, oh, this one had a link in it, a YouTube link. You shouldn't have shared that. Oh, because like if I share an event, uh -huh. you're not supposed to put like a website. So some people <laughs> will spell out .com. They'll spell out .com because yep. that tricks the algorithm. And I never knew. I never knew why they did it. They go, oh yeah, you can't. And I go, I've been putting websites in and my that's posts. Why no one's coming to you. Yeah, that's why nobody right. cares. And so people do that. But I just wonder, like in the old days, if you're like that, uh, they have like a carrier pigeon. They're yeah. sending a message. Yeah. They put it in the raven's mouth, send it out, and then they got to worry. Like, did he hit a storm? Right. Did he get shot? What are What are their right? Was he Was he hunted by a larger bird of prey? Come on now. Mm -hmm. Truthfully, so my publisher told me, like, yeah, we're struggling with some of the videos we're making because we get blocked on certain words yeah, by the algorithms. Oh, right. And the first thing my social media manager told me was, oh, yeah, if racism is in this, is in any of this stuff, you're not being seen by yeah. most people. And you're like, man, I'm glad I didn't just write a book, book on, on racism, racism and just put out a bunch of videos about talking about racism. And so they're then, like, it's not, this isn't going to faith based communities, is it? Oh, no, 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 no. And this is. <laughs> Oh yeah, you throw the faith based in there because right. to their defense, they're more sensitive to it too. That's the other thing is like they're half of those people are muting those words anyway. Probably right now, that's maybe. the thing. It's so weird. Yeah, maybe they don't want to hear. They just don't want to see it anymore. And that's the funny thing. I always go. You know, the flip side is, is I wrote a comedy book that I actually I, I still stand behind. Like I still love that book. That's a great book. It's a great book. You like, should stand behind it. And and I it's I'll a do a big book if you can stand behind. I it. do. Go ahead. I do a podcast. Yeah. With a comedian. Mm -hmm. Like, actually, I do a lot of fun things that I think are accessible. And then And then you, when you get there, I hang you a dang racism book, you know, and you're like, well, wah, wah, wah. You're no, just showing the many sides, the prism that is John Driver. I just want to go. many moods. I think we should, we could be people who have fun who also talk about important things. Like, is that, Johnny, is it so much to ask? Isn't and that what the ancient philosophers did? Don't you think Aristotle had a good knock-knock joke? I mean, there's no doubt. You don't think Plato ever said, pull my finger? <sighs> I bet he did in Latin. <laughs> I don't pull fingers per se. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> when is Greek? You need to find out what the Greek yeah. is for pull my finger. Oh That'd my be great God. if you like had like a scripture you're breaking down and then like, because it's always something amazing. Like the Greek, I mean, this word is dunamis. It's where we get the word dynamite. We're going to have dynamite power. It'd be funny if it was like, this means, and it means something really like, it's like an old horrible. Yeah. <laughs> this meant flatulence. Yeah. Can you believe it? <laughs> Can you imagine? Oh, my goodness. Uh, you know, there's flatulence in the Bible, Johnny. It's got to be there. Yeah. Mm. It's, a, it's not... Nobody wrote about it, but we know that it happened. We don't know Because there are it, people. But you don't know what all in the ancient... Those diets, those Mediterranean diets, Ooh. John. Ooh. Think about that. You ever done those? You ever you've fasted done, for a couple of days? You've done Ooh, paleo. You know what's going on. Mm. It's a rumbly in your tumbly. Let me tell you. Speaking of, yeah. uh, I'm thinking April. If the Lord will allow, <laughs> at this point, just a season of maybe some decent weather, no tornadoes yeah. and no snowstorms. Okay. Now, I know this is not big to what's going on in the world. I'm just speaking to my little micro world. Right. And there's a few other things that may resolve here, big, big things in the driver life. Sure. it would be a good month to try to take off a few pounds because I have what <sighs> doctors call a bit of a weight problem now. Yeah, bear claws lodged right in this region. I ate a Cadbury egg today. I've had I've had a couple of those. Like this this season, we're not even to, into April. It's not even. But the candies are out there. You know, you're going through Walgreens. You're in line. You got your antihistamines. You got your whatever. You got your COVID. Your test. diet pills. And then you go. <laughs> you got your COVID test. And they're like they're right there at the register. Yeah. Uh, sixty nine cents. Look at that. My wife will eat one Cadbury pure, egg. Pure sugar. A year. It's like a shot to the adrenaline yeah, to your heart. You really can't take more than one. Mm -mm. It's like having if a. If you eat more than one Cadbury egg, you got a problem. Oh gosh! Like curry, she was. We were in line, and I, I got something. I got like a little candy something, and she got, and she had two Cadbury eggs. And oh. I go, whoa! I said, did you get me one? She goes, this other one is for you. She said it like, but I don't know the real truth behind it. Like, was she called out? Was she gonna eat two Cadbury eggs? I don't or was think she like, she was. of course, one of these is for you, sweetheart. E I wouldn't. I wouldn't dare. I don't think a person I could eat I immediately thought two. of you when I saw these. You couldn't eat two. We'll share it. I mean, that thing is so, so thick in the middle. It is. In a good way. Yeah. But too much. Like, mm -hmm. more it's than rich. that. It's a richness And I'm a guy it. that can eat an entire pizza. Yeah. And, and a half gallon of ice cream. And I say that's too much. More than one Cadbury egg. <sighs> I gotta clean it up. Here's how I feel. I had this thought the other day. 
and I haven't figured out how to make it for the stage yet, but I am, okay, so when I go, like I don't, we don't, you know, you see people on TikTok all the time. There's a huge trend in TikTok now of meal planners who are trying to lose weight, and they go, this is how I lost 100 pounds. Right. I plan all my meals for the week. Right. I get 10 pounds of chicken. I cook it in the crock pot. I season it with this seasoning, and they show you how they make these little, like, chicken wraps for every day of the week, and they yeah. put them in Tupperware, and then they go, now I don't have to worry about it. I got my chickens, my beans, my rice. This is 300 calories. I know every day I'm going to have this for lunch. And I go, I need to be these people. What I do is I make no plan, and then it's like 1230, and I go, hey, well, I guess I, I'll go grab something. <laughs> and then I end up at Burger King or whatever yeah. because it's like – and I here's what I've decided I am. I'm like the negligent stepdad for myself. You know how, like, if you're a bad dad – yeah. The, if you're a kid, you don't know you have a bad dad because you go, Dad's the coolest. He smokes in the car. He lets us ride in the back of the pickup truck. We get McDonald's truck. every day. We get McDonald's right. every day. Uh, we, he didn't know what we were going to have for dinner because we just he, we got dropped off at his house for the weekend. He didn't have a plan, so guess who got Little Caesars? That's a bad dad. Yeah. But you think it's a good dad when you're a kid. I'm still a kid, and I'm my own bad, bad stepdad. Step wow. Guys. It's not funny yet, but it's the truth. <laughs> It's the truth. I really am. <laughs> I'm a negligent parent to myself. Johnny has a single tear rolling down his face right now. I don't He's know trying what to, to make it into a joke. I don't know what to do Can about you it. Just sit in the dark and eat a cream egg <laughs> like an animal. <laughs> Even an animal wouldn't eat it. I'm not sure my dog would eat two right. of those. Right. He's like, whoa, this is too far. <sighs> well, dogs can't have chocolate. It'll kill them. Uh, Be careful. Wow. We that, give you're him. You're like, oh, that's a myth. <laughs> <laughs> My dog's favorite food is chocolate. <laughs> now he has violent diarrhea. But hold on. Are you saying those are linked? Oh my goodness. Um, so <laughs> wow, that's fun. By the way, the Oscars are on tonight. Aren't they? I don't know. It's just do you watch? No. Have at you all. seen any of the movies? Nope, none. So wait, let me go back because there's a joke about weight loss weight loss that I wanted to read. Oh. This is Jordan Macon, who's a one of the dry bar comics out of Utah. He's fantastic. And this tweet well, I was thinking about when you said that about needing to lose weight. It said, I've lost 10 pounds after one week of Nutrisystem, and it's pretty cool to know exactly how much the joy inside me used to weigh. <laughs> Isn't that fantastic? That's perfect. I've heard like variations of that kind of joke where one I, one I really love that I wish I'd written was, I've been on the Atkins diet for uh, two weeks, and so far I've lost 14 days. Like, that's a great joke. <laughs> that's good. It's kind of similar in... Yeah, the, the misdirection is kind of similar, but I love that. I love knowing how much the joy inside me used to weigh. That's fantastic. Because that was the old thing, you know, the twenty-one grams, right? You ever heard the phrase twenty-one grams? Uh, there was even a movie about it. Like they did this science experiment, and they they literally like had weights on a bed. This is back when there was a lot more superstition in medicine. There still is, but less. Mm. We've got less of it in there. And uh, they wanted to see if when you die your weight changes and that would be how much your soul weighed because as your soul exits right. your body and goes to heaven or hell, if your weight changes and some, in some, one of those tests, the weight changed by 21 grams. Mm. And so they said, that's what a soul was. So there's like, there's this whole theory out there that like your soul weighs 21 grams because of some weird rigged test in the forties or thirties wow. back when they were just like, who knows what else they were doing? Wow. Like just, putting leeches on people of course now they're putting leeches on people again and they've decided it's good again yeah you know there's leech therapy oh yeah you know vanderbilt hospital does leeches yeah like oh yeah we'll put leeches on you and this will help your nose job that we just did keep from going necrotic because the leeches will draw all the bad blood out and they'll draw they'll draw healthy blood into those you're like what because yeah. like i watched that show botched Did you ever see that show mm -mm. it's messed up it's like so plastic surgeries that right, go bad go and then they go to get these guys to fix them so there's just people that are just having a bad time of it yeah and they'll use leeches sometimes wow and you just go we've just come full circle we have so maybe that'll wow maybe it's all right Ooh. leeches i you know i think could they not just could we not create some sort of blood sucking like that device? thing that the swimmers use the, yeah. the cupping the cup thing <laughs> That's what it makes. Does Sadie do that for volleyball? What no, it? no, she hasn't. Cup therapy. No, cupping. No, we haven't done that. It's I mean, there's her some shoulder hurts. So that, there is some gnarly looking. Oh yeah, on those people they after they. The, it is. You look like an octopus. Some of those people just yeah. down their back. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe it's good for you. Because, Not I mean, a sponsor. Michael Phelps did it. The look at Michael he Phelps. He won eight, 82 medals. Didn't he also have like special lungs and? Yeah, his like his lung capacity. They did a study on oh, him right. was greater than the average person and. 
It, like his body was made for what he did. And guys, won't that preach? I wonder about people like that. Like they said that about Lance too before he got caught doping. They yeah. said that like he whatever. And I've read that about a mountain. There's some mountain climber that he can climb without oxygen. He climbed Everest without oxygen right. or something. He's one of two people in the world that even have this ability to not just pass out from the thin air and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But like how do you know? Right. How did you, get, a, how'd you get aligned? Yeah. How did you go like, you know what? I don't think I want to sell insurance. I want to climb Mount Everest because yeah. I've got freak lungs that I didn't even know. But you'd, no have, one to, knows. you'd have to try it one time. Yeah. Like, what are we not trying right mm-hmm. now that really is the thing that I we were going to do? I think it's salads. See, I think it's wrapping. Is I, it? I, I, for me. The other day, I you thought. You sure it's not salads? I was listening. <laughs> I can be like, <laughs> sit ups. <laughs> we're not. We're not. <laughs> turns out. It turns out I can <clears throat> have abs of steel. And I thought the other day, wrapping, how much it would disrupt uh-huh. the. Perhaps the entire. I think it would disrupt our friendship. It would disrupt if, you started if rapping. I just dropped a rap album. What if you were and it was really good? Yeah. What if it was really good? Could you see me in that light? I don't think you could. I think you couldn't have like a here's, here's what you're subjective. Missing. No, it's not even about whether or not you could write the rhymes and whether you could deliver them well. It's you've got no swag. Wow. You're gonna say I have no street cred? No, no. It's about like I know that you hate yourself. <laughs> And rappers like <laughs> they they exude like confidence. Hey, maybe not the rappers I listen to. <laughs> <laughs> you got like the self loathing rappers. <laughs> you know what I mean though? It's like there's a there's some of this and you, you if you I if you have... made this move, I'd go, Nope, not buying it. If you just started into it, if you went But what if that's what I needed to offset all of this bad self esteem? Like we've done raps <clears throat> for youth things. We've right. done on mission trips, we've wrote horrible, funny raps. Uh-huh. Okay. But even as we get into character yeah. It's funny. It makes people laugh. Yeah. That's not what real rappers do. They go, this guy's legit. Look at him. Yeah. But nobody would think that with you. They go, this guy's having a midlife crisis. I, I want to, in the middle of worship at least. Like have a rap break? Maybe have a moment where I drop a spoken word with the music. I could buy that. <clears throat> and then I want to drop a brr, brr in there. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what it would do if I dropped a brr? Like they... <sighs> Would come unglued. I think what they would think is he's having a struggle. He's having right something's wrong. <laughs> they wouldn't know what it was. Maybe at times, you know. But my daughter, it, my we've daughter, seeing younger people at the church now. There's a lot of people that go to our church now. I don't know them. They don't know me. Yeah. it's great though. But I just go, yeah. Would those people? The would they go? Would they go? Oh, uh, oh, that guy. I don't know. I mean, my daughter can't do the. Our pr- teaching pastor does it. Pr- I can't do it. You can't do the rolled R's. I'm doing the, the he's doing a he's doing a lip roll. I am. She does a gargle. Like she can't get oh. it out, but it's a brr. Yeah. No. Johnny, it's listen, man, out here it, if you've got that, that's something. Now you could build the swag from I that because you go, I can do that and no one else can. I have a thing, yeah, that the the rappers can it's do. It's like being double jointed. Yeah. Or rolling your tongue. You didn't know until yeah. you're like, oh, and everybody that can't do that. And they go, John, you're special. You might be the one. Yes. Like, what if I'm like this 44-year-old Eminem figure that people don't know. Like, Oh, you're an Eminem M- figure. Eminem M- peanut. M- peanut. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it was coming. I knew it was coming. What if I'm this Eminem figure? <laughs> Sheesh. Guys, uh, it might be time for me to get another manuscript <laughs> soon. Yeah. A little too much. Uh, I think it's one of those things, though, I could see doing, if you're in that mode of like, I got to do something different to like, get my creativity kick-started. Uh-huh. Like, people do that sometimes. I think I want to start painting this year. Yeah. I could see you being like, I'm going to put out a rap album. Yeah. And listen, if you decide to do it, I'm on board. As I make fun of you, I'll be secretly going, you go, John. You got this. Yeah. You know, I'm I in did... your corner. I'll text you encouraging things, but on the air, you're going down. Now, this is, I will say this is true. I've been listening to a little bit of our old music. Okay. No rap in that. No. And I, I have thought about you and I putting out a song. Oh, it's really? been a while. Maybe redoing one of the songs or making a new one. Okay. You singing, obviously. I'll harmonize and, and no, play and try. John, no, 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 I don't we'll, want no. We'll flip a coin. No, the coin's been flipped. You've already been told you have a great voice today. Radio voice. Oh, okay. Yeah, like talking, not singing. All right. So, and I like singing harmonies. Johnny, I'm a collaborator. Is what I like to do. Bro, speaking of harmonies, did you see the announcement from the Bone, Cayman's Call Bone Twitter account? Harmonies? No, oh, sorry. Cayman's Call's Twitter account. No. Suddenly, way. somebody retweeted a tweet that they, I was like, Cadman's Call has a Twitter, first of all. Really? And then it said, I can't remember exactly what it said, but it was like, it's been 20, it had the album cover from their first record. Yeah. It had all those hits on it that are amazing. It's an amazing record. Yeah, it's great. And it said, 
25 years ago this came out and blah, blah, blah. A lot's changed since then, but it, feel, it, it basically was like teasing something, but something's coming, maybe coming back around too. Wow. It stay tuned or whatever. And, and it had a website, Cayman's Call It. And I was like, mm. and then somebody below that in the comment thread said, Derek Webb tweeted the same thing today, like word for word. And I'll go, because Derek Webb's kind of distanced himself over right. the years from Cayman's Call. He's got more progressive like theology. Like they're calling and, so and he's, he's not, not answering. answering. Yeah. yeah. But I think that they're getting ready to put a 25th anniversary tour together and I am going to be there. And you think they're going to need an opening act. Yes, and that's when our that's where our song yeah. comes in with our harmonies. Yeah. Specially layered. Yes. There. Delicious oh, harmonies. My goodness. Anyway, yeah. Well, you would go, right? You'd go with me? Yeah, go okay, do a yeah. show. Yeah, Bro. I'd go. Heyman's Call. 40 Acres, get out of here. Yeah. What a great record. 40 that was the second record. record. Yeah. I like the second record. I like them both. Second record was stronger from start to finish, in my opinion. Yeah. First record was just like the first time we'd heard anything like that in, in, mm -hmm. in, that, in our sort of world. Yeah. Because it was all audio adrenaline, third day. And right. Then and they somebody were so came folky in, and, yeah. and harmonies. And, yeah. 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 Interesting. Yeah, no, they were great, and it's interesting to think that they might come back uh, and do a do an anniversary tour or something. Yeah, uh, so I mean, I'm there, and then we'll open and we got a thread. Get the band back together. Come on, man, we need to start uh, working on the song. We got to recruit. We got to. Yeah, yeah, guys, if you're <laughs> if you're out there, people are clamoring. People have been out there clamoring for this. Yeah, to themselves. It, yeah, it's not really an audible clamor. It's so subtle, right? Because you don't want it. You don't want people like. Out loud asking. Even though social media is full of people who speak their every thought They're, nonstop, somehow this they've kept deep in their heart and they've said, you know what? I'm just going to vibe on this. Yeah. But we felt it. I felt it. And we are, we're coming we're back. We're answering the question that you're asking in That audibly. you didn't ask. Right. You didn't have. You didn't have to ask. Your soul you, asked. Yeah. It. We feel the soul. I mean, our, we don't do soul music. No. No. It's very like two white guys with acoustic guitars, but it was who may or may not rap. It it could happen anytime. So, <laughs> hey, listener, I hope you've enjoyed the time that we've had today, freestyling, if you will. Uh, it's free. It, <laughs> it is. Yeah, it's a style. It's been free. Uh, so hey, make sure you head on over to our website. Talk about that podcast dot com. Yeah, you can get all our archived episodes. Uh, Over two hundred now. Yeah, check out the one with Dave Barnes. We thought that was really fun and what a cool great. one with Dave Barnes, John McLaughlin. What great guys. They were fun. I want to have them back. I want to, I'm thinking about starting inviting more guests. You know, I've got some comedian friends and yeah. uh, that we always talk about. And I was like, we need to have them on the show. Yeah. Because I think we've got a good rapport now. And we, sometimes when you bring a third person in, it's like, is there going to be a thing? But now that we've pulled it off with Dave and John, I was like, well, that was fun. Yeah. So now I want to have like Brian and, Do it. you know, we have Marty again, maybe Rick. Yeah. Um, be fun. Okay. Some comedians. And then whoever you want. No, no, it's fine. I see where well, you're taking the show. Let's get the people people want to hear, comedians. Because anyway, over 200 episodes. <laughs> go on there. If you feel so inclined, uh, there's a Patreon link there yeah. if you want to kick in some shekels. We really love our patrons, and we need to do like a patron uh, group call. We've not done one of those in a while. Yeah, we should even talk about it, though. We're not really going to do it. We're Guys, follow when Johnny through. says that, no, we're gonna do I need Johnny to set that up. And we, uh, <laughs> I can't even get the right song on my social media post, so you I'm know sorry. where I am right now. But, it was the right song for something, but it was not the right song for that post. <laughs> was, I just love it. You couldn't say, hey, man, you might want to check your account. John's like, hey, great song choice. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I wasn't like reveling in it. I was no. like, I was concerned. No, I knew it was your concern, and I needed that little moment of of humor in that. I did because by the you'd end already of, been told right. No, that wasn't the first, oh, that was the first. Person you were to Allison get came in like right behind each other. I can't remember which was first. Oh no! But it was just the by that night I was laughing. Yeah, especially at yours. I was like, okay, it, Johnny made fun of this. I can I can breathe. Yeah, this is funny. So and now we've talked about it. But hey, also make sure you follow Johnny, man. Uh, can you announce? Yeah. Can you? Okay. I don't. What am I announcing? What's coming up? Oh, what? sure. Yeah, my second dry bar uh, taping is coming up. Yeah. It's uh, April 23rd, and that's in Provo, Utah, right near Salt Lake. So if you're in the Utah area and you want to come, tickets are available on their website. There's going to be two shows on April 23rd, and uh, we're going to do my second taping with dry bar. They've been super cool to me. The last few weeks especially, things have been really picking up with them, and that's been great. They've been such a great partner to work with. And uh, so that's happening, and uh, yeah, lots of tour dates going up. I've been booking a lot of things, so if you want me to come to your church or organization or your corporate or your 
And there's going to be some live shows, some ticketed events that I'm putting together for the end of the year as well. So, yeah, lots of – so keep keep an eye on my website for new tour dates and things like that. Go to Amazon. Check out John's book, uh, notsoblackandwhitebook.com, or just go to Amazon, search John's name. You can find out 48 books John's written Ugh, um, in seven languages. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. There is true. another John Driver who's a Mennonite theologian. That's not me. But you can tell he's got his – Face on the book jacket. Uh, often, what if you looked exactly like him? Wouldn't that be, be great? You have to cut your beard. Yeah, he's way smarter than me. But if, no. Oh, yes, he is. Absolutely. Don't, nobody's smarter than my Johnny. Oh, come on now. No, you can check he's out the. He's more though, Mennonite than you. But for hey, sure. <laughs> he's way more Mennonite. That's true. <laughs> but yeah, my, my, with my friend Reggie Dabbs. And, uh, check that out. Leave a review. Leave a rating. Yeah, please go leave a rating. We really, really need that right now. Five stars would help. Oh. It helps people find the book uh, that can benefit from it. It's a great resource. And uh, this is an interesting time we're living in. A lot of racially charged things, and uh, we want to make sure people are getting the right message. And uh, so, yeah, it's a great it's a great way to kind of like tiptoe into that world and uh, honest conversations. So, good stuff. Do that. Well, guys, we sure appreciate all the time that you spend with us every week. We'll see you next week on Talk About That. Hey, 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 hey.